During the past decade, a wide range of symptoms have been reportedly triggered by exposure to the radio frequency electromagnetic fields that emanate from cell phones during use, including headaches, nausea, dizziness, fatigue. The news media has promoting this as a, as a new medical condition called electrosensitivity or electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Uh, these stories have been driven in part by people who claim to have detected a clear link between their own poor health and exposure to a specific electrical device, which can have you know, major implications for a person's quality of life and health and stress, not to mention problems at the job or social situations. Now, to see how common this was, they sat college students down on two big electromagnetic coils and then went through a symptom checklist asking how they felt under both strong and weak electromagnetic field conditions. And they did report neurological symptoms, headaches, drowsiness, dizziness, fatigue, and irritability, visceral symptoms such as palpitations, muscle tension, nausea, though more under the weak field condition, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, and a little heartburn. They could feel it in their skin, crawly, cold, sweaty, itchy feelings, and their sensory organs registered blurred vision, ringing in their ears, dry mouth, a little stuffy, along with some other symptoms. Forty students in all asked to rate the symptoms during the sham, weak, and strong exposures, but in reality it was all a sham. They weren't blasted with any fields, period. The coils seemed to be connected to an impressive electric power supply with colored lights and everything, but it wasn't even really connected to anything under any of the conditions. The study was titled Polluted Places or Polluted Minds, suggesting that those who claim to be experiencing these symptoms may just be deluding themselves. Before jumping to conclusions, though, you want to study people who actually suffer from the disorder. Twenty men and women who claimed they were sensitive to cell phones were put to the test. They reported a variety of symptoms upon exposure to cell phone radiation, all sorts of pains and sensations, dizziness, breathing difficulties. So, Researchers sat them down in a chair with various active cell phones strapped near their head, and boy could they feel them, experiencing a variety of symptoms, but ironically they felt a bit worse with just like a beanbag dummy phone next to their head. Contrary to definite expectations, none of the so-called electrosensitive could even distinguish whether the cell phones were turned on or off. And that's what nearly all such studies have found no evidence that the symptoms are anything but psychological in nature, noting that those who claim such hypersensitivity tend to exhibit more obsessive-compulsive, hostile, phobic, paranoid traits, and so they changed the name. What used to be called electromagnetic hypersensitivity in the medical literature is now called idiopathic environmental intolerance attributed to electromagnetic fields, an acronym that Sounds like something straight out of Old MacDonald's farm. Despite the conviction of IEIEMF sufferers that their symptoms are triggered by exposure to magnetic fields, repeated experiments have been unable to replicate this phenomenon under controlled conditions. And we're talking 46 studies involving more than 1,000 people who say they have it, but when put to the test, when you put all the studies together, not only did they find no significant impact on any of the symptoms, there was no evidence the subjects were even able to detect the fields. Uh, not a single person ever? Well, there was this one study in which two participants showed extraordinary performance, guessing when the cell phone was on, up to 97 times out of 100. I mean, if that was just chance, that would be like the odds of being struck by lightning four times in a single year. But they failed to replicate the result a month later. And in science, if you can't replicate something, it doesn't exist. So why does this notion of hypersensitivity persist? Well, there is now an entire industry profiting off various gizmos claiming to protect people, and the media seems to love the hypersensitivity story. Yet why don't journalists mention the data? Uh, the media has tended to claim research in this area has been neglected, but the research has been done. Dozens of studies that appear to have been systematically ignored by almost every single journalist 
covering the issue. Blind provocation studies published in the peer-reviewed academic literature, and they're almost all negative. I mean, you could argue the evidence is nearly unanimous. So why doesn't the media even mention the data? Perhaps they leave it out on purpose. Perhaps they're just incompetent and never looked it up. Or maybe they're just suckered in by the snake oil salesman selling insulating paint and, like, protective beekeeper hats. Uh, not only do these lobbyists also conveniently fail to mention the dozens of studies, they viciously attack anyone who even dares to mention the data, accusing them of denying the reality of people's symptoms. No, no one's saying they're making them up. The science just suggests whatever the symptoms, the cell phones don't appear to be the cause. And hey, look, if you want to go there, one could just as fairly argue that those who are trying to sell these poor people a bill of goods are themselves hindering better understanding of their customers' suffering.